Hi everyone, my name is Phil and I wanted to do a little tutorial on the mod operator because it seems like everyone is a little bit confused about how to use it or what you could use it for. So I'm going to show you an example of a short program that takes in a number of cents and then gives you the appropriate coins that you need for the change. So we're going to write a function called coin change. So we're going to do coin change and that takes in some cents. And then what we need to do is figure out how many quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies that we need for our change. So first let's start with our quarters. And we know a quarter is 25 cents. So we can figure that out by dividing our number of cents by 25. Simple enough. All right, let's move on to dime. So a dime is 10 cents. So let's take our cents and divide by 10. But hold on, that's not going to work exactly right because we have our cents here. So we have cents. This is where the mod operator is going to come in. So let's take our cents mod by the amount of a quarter, 25. So cents mod 25, and then we can divide by 10. I'm going to put parentheses in here so you can see how this is working a little bit better. You don't need the parentheses, but you have cents mod 25, which is the remainder after you take out the quarters, then divide by 10. All right, so let's move on. Then we need to do the math with the nickel. So a nickel would be cents, and then we figured out we need to mod 25. Then let's mod 10, and then divide by 5 for our nickel. And how about for the penny? So that'll be cents mod 25, mod 10, mod 5, and then divide it by 1. Let's take a closer look at this though. So if we take 10 mod 5, if we think about the solution to that, the solution to that is actually 0. So that means we don't need the mod 10 in here. And then now let's look at this. 25 mod 5 is also 0 because 5 times 5 is 25. So now we have cents mod 5 divided by 1. And if we think about a number, which would be cents mod 5 divided by 1, we don't need them to divide it by 1 because any number divided by 1 is actually just that number. All right, so we have our basic logic done here. Now let's print our results to the screen. So we will do the number of coins for, and let's print cents, so cents are, all right, now let's go to a new line, print, let's do quarter. variable quarter let's do dimes comma dime now let's print nickels nickels and then finally let's print pennies all right. And then let's print a blank line to make this look better. All right, so let's try running this. So let's coin change. Let's try something that's simple, like 25. Let's run this. So there you go. The number of coins for 25 cents are one quarter. All right, let's try something that uses more than one coin. 
let's do change 30. So that should be one dime, sorry, one quarter and one nickel. So there we go, one quarter and one nickel. Let's just do a few more cases. Coin change 43 and coin change 96. Let's see what happens here. All right, so there you are. Looks like it's running pretty well. There's one more case that I want to try though. Let's try coin change of minus 43 cents. Let me see what happens here. The number of coins with minus 43 cents are minus two quarters, one nickel, and one penny. So that doesn't seem to be right, does it? So you really can't have minus 43 cents. But what happens here is with the cents, we're passing in minus 43. So minus 43 divided by 25 in Python is minus 2. So we don't, we want to prevent the program from even accepting negative numbers. So how can we do that? We can do that with an if, with an if else statement. So let's try that. So let's say if cents is less than or equal to zero, so we don't want to deal with zero cents either. Let's print an error message. Print error cents must be positive. All right, so there's the if part. And now let's talk about the else part. So if cents is less than or zero, we're going to print this. But if cents is positive, it will pass over this since it's, it's greater than zero. And then we'll go to else, then it will do this. But we got to fix our indentation here. And a quick way to do this in Code Sculptor is highlight all of that and then you either go shift tab and that'll make it quicker work for you. So now let's try running this program. There you go. So for coin change minus 43, error sense must be positive. So hopefully this tutorial shows you just another way that the mod operator can be used and how it actually is very helpful.